Nice. All right, I'm back live again. Um, looks like the frame rate is better this time. Does it work for everybody? I think so. In this uh, mysterious dark space, which I'm in. Um, yeah, okay, cool. Um, yeah, I had to, um, previously, I just had to kind of get it tuned correctly. Um, otherwise, the, the stuff I wanted to show you probably wasn't going to work well. All right, so, uh, yeah. Um, I am uh, Hong Pong, I guess. Dan Fight. Uh, I've been involved with Little Rev since uh, pretty early on. Um, I was kind of uh, not so active um, at some points earlier this year, uh, but I've been getting more involved lately. Um, we do have some good news that our uh, system at OccupyTheComs.cc um, that is uh, basically some adjustments were just made to it, and um, it has really cut the load time down. It'll feel a lot faster when you're using it right now. Um, so if you want to give that a try, go right ahead. Um, so I figured I would just come on for, you know, probably not more than 20 minutes, half an hour. Yes, I like to feel dark and shady. And then, uh, we got this, there's a cat that you can't see right here. And this cat has a philosophy. Solidarity means attack. Sorry. So, anyway, um, I just wanted to, uh, throw in a couple um, new documents that have uh, come up. Um, obviously the OWS documents uh, that were released a few days ago have gotten a lot of attention, um, but also another one just popped up uh, earlier today, um, and uh, I thought that was pretty interesting, or rather, I guess, after midnight, officially, um, and I will show you guys that one right now. Um, and so I'll try to keep an eye on the chat, um, and... Uh, We'll just go with that. Well, yeah, you know, it's it's a, this is good. This is the surprise, like, late night update, you know? So uh, it's appropriate that it's all dark and mysterious and shady, um, you know, with nobody around, right? Anyway, um, so the idea here is uh, on a website called uh, publicintelligence.net. Um, it really does a fine job with a lot of work on a whole bunch of different issues. Um, I'm going to switch over to that right now. So on publicintelligence.net um, you can see uh, a lot of cool new documents going on and they basically um, the one I wanted to, the new one I wanted to bring to your attention um, was that uh, they have found a really interesting new US Northern Command Title 10 dual status commander standard operating procedures and what that is is um, basically let's see if I can blow this up yeah, yeah, it's zooming, good. Um, so yeah, this uh, NORAD thing, basically I, I've been trying to work um, a lot on uh, sort of getting a, a certain handle on how um, the domestic military system works, um, which is definitely a subject which uh, has a lot of drama around it, um, and without really adding to the drama, I do think it's interesting, and I think it's worth people to find out about. So I think what I would like to do tonight is just very quickly um, skim over um, the OWS FBI documents. There's just a couple things I wanted to mention to people, um, and I think that they, you know, definitely show like the kind of concerns that we have about fusion centers are totally validated. The fact that this security sort of interface is, you know, kind of uh, very corporatist in its orientation. I think that, that uh, that's very justified by this. But there's some other details, too. Um, so I just figured we'd kind of take a quick shot at some of that stuff and uh, take a look at it and go from there. So, like, let me know in the chat how well, how readable the document is. And I'll just kind of indicate the page that we're on. Um, and we'll go from there. Okay, so anyway. Um, these are, this is that batch of documents that was just dropped a couple days ago. I believe it's attributed to Jason Leopold at Truthout, and it's on um, the Document Cloud website. Um, so I think you should be able to see that. Oops, sorry. DocumentCloud.org. Um, and uh, yeah, so um, you know th this this data dump um, really did encompass a lot of uh, stuff. Um, a lot of different um, cities were included in the data, which is good. Um, but they also, I thought this was very interesting that they actually um, 
you know, they, they hide certain bits of metadata that, that I as a researcher um, kind of depend on to get sort of an orientation. I'll show you exactly what I mean in a minute here. Um, so yeah, just let me know if you have any questions. So this is um, an early situation report from, you know, a couple days before OWS started. And this is from the Indianapolis division. So what we try to do is kind of, you know, look at the structure of the documents to get a little better sense of where they came from um, and sort of what the flow of information was. Um, so, okay, now here's what's important, um, actually. This right here, 801F IP C96101-479. Now, um, what I believe that this means is uh, 801F is the section of the U.S. code which the FBI investigation is opened under. This number is a kind of, it's an FBI case, like, serial number. And so 801F should be the section of U.S. code, the crime that they suspect is going on. Um, IP is uh, the, um, uh, the field office. And so I think IP stands for Indianapolis in this case. And um, C96101 is the individual case file. Thank you, Triboros. Uh, Triboros posted um, the uh, one link to uh, grab these files. Um, and then the document cloud link, which I will throw in the chat real quick here. Um, this is, there is a download link on this page, so you can use that. Um, so, uh, anyway, I just wanted to mention, like, uh, these markers are actually some of the most important stuff. Um, to look at. And so what you can see is that there's actually, um, I believe what this 479 means is that it is the 479th file in the serial. So this is the, so 801F is the section of US code. IP is the field office it came from. C96101 is like the individual file in their office. And 479 is which item this is in the file. So that's a way that that kind of gives us an in like um, handles about where to go next or other file references. It's kind of like a URL into the FBI system, and uh, I kind of tend to believe that the operational word in Federal Bureau of Investigation may actually be the word bureau. I think there's something to be said for that. Um, so uh, yeah, so there's sort of blah 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 summary stuff um, and a lot of stuff that's blacked out that's like relatively specific um you can uh this this is marked b7e so you, you can find out what exemption that is from data release all right i'll try to scale my frame a little bit so kind of waste a little less space here zoom it down to the more interesting stuff um so yeah that's all b7e that, that could be like specific tactical stuff too it could be like uh you know um like we think they will use method X or Y or whatever. Um, let's see. Uh, okay, so you can see right there, it's going to the Indiana Intelligence Fusion Center. Like that's important, um, and that mean you know that means that this is being created at the federal level, but it's being pushed down to the state level, um, and it has all the, all to do with all this fusion center stuff. And now here's another, you know, unclassified stuff, but it's still all blacked out totally. Um, and then, you know, that could be footnotes to other investigations. Kind of hard to say what it is. Um, and of course, the customer satisfaction survey of, did you like this? Was it actionable? <laughs> A lot of insanity like this. Now, um, this, okay, this is an FD999. I think this is a statistical accomplishment. Um, let's see. And so it's talking about information being disseminated to uh, you know a public safety agency in Green Bay so this is coming from a different thing um, yeah okay rise PDX is talking about um, fusion center structure I mean they they the fusion centers are run usually as state agencies they're usually part of like the Homeland Security and emergency management um, agencies or whatever like that's what they are in Minnesota um, so it's not necessarily like who's like commanding them. It's just like, I mean, I think it's important to understand like what the systems are that are involved, right? Like all these sort of various databases, etc. Anyway, so um, this is a record of 
stuff going around related to, like the Milwaukee office, Green Bay, um, you know, regarding threat to shoot police, very ridiculous stuff. Um, and then, obviously, the names of FBI agents doing this. Now, I wasn't sure... Oh, yeah, this is nice, too, because you can kind of get a little feel for their little intranet, Sentinel, FBI, net, dot FBI. Um, I thought this might have been a statistical accomplishment, but maybe it's not. We'll get to that later. Okay, so anyway, um, this is a Freedom of Information Act, like, FOIA request uh, exclusion list. This is the list of stuff they censored. Um, so one thing, too, is that if you do a FOIA request, um, I mean... Uh, they will redact in you know personal information about people, um, but if you give them a freedom wa or a, a, a privacy waiver, then they will actually release a little more information, and that can be helpful in the research of this stuff. Okay, now here is a good example of uh, an, another sort of basic uh, case file document, and what's interesting about this um, uh, is that. It says the FD uh, 542. Um, let me know if you guys, if you think that the uh, visual is like clear enough. Oh, whew, all right. Looks like it's kind of crisp. That's good. That's good. Um, anyway, uh, so it's a good example. Um, like over many years of looking at FBI FOIAs, this kind of basic format doesn't usually change too much, and that's helpful. Um, it gives us a little sense of this, like, you know, J. Edgar Hoover structure. So, usually the name of the special agent is hidden, that's nothing new, um, and who's in charge, etc. Um, and sometimes there can be funny little kind of CC notes in the corners that are helpful too. Um, and so, but here, actually, this is some of the most interesting stuff that I noticed in this whole request, is actually that the case ID number is blanked out, and then we can see 132 handwritten on there because that's that handwritten serial, that's that last part of the number I just explained. But the rest of the case file number is actually missing. And so that's actually really annoying because that means they're, you know, they're, they're, they're hiding the serial numbers. And usually those are not blocked. Like, I actually think this is the one thing that particularly jumped out at me that I wanted to mention to people was that they're hiding the case ID numbers. And that's actually a pretty big deal. Um, and, you know, it's a little weird that a title is missing. Um, you know, characteristic typos. It's, it's, it's Joint Terrorism Task Force, not Joint Terrorism's Task Force. But, you know, we can't ask the FBI to spell their own organizations correctly. Um, you know, secret individuals at the meeting in Anchorage. Um, you know, it's all, it's all pretty well blocked out. Um, that's probably Anchorage Police Department Lieutenant... Um, you know, and this is where, you know, you might be able to use the fact that this meeting happened on this day to request data from, uh, the Anchorage side. Like, that's one of the things, since a lot of these are liaison meetings, like, they get, at least give dates and times, which, you know, can be plowed into further for information, and I think that helps. Um, so, okay, here we go. Now, this is, again, this is another really important thing I wanted to mention. Uh, this is a statistical accomplishment page. And what you got to understand is that the increments of activity in the federal and the FBI involve this statistical accomplishment system. And so they will um, claim that because they had a liaison with another agency for, you know, intelligence dissemination, that that increments their careers. And, and that's actually a pretty important thing. Like, if you want to kind of get to the granular level of what drives the war on terror, like what gets these guys in a frenzy, it's that by disseminating this quote-unquote intelligence, they can advance their careers. And I've had a number, you know, of discussions with Colleen Rowley, the FBI whistleblower, about this, like, statistical accomplishment issue. But again, it's, 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 it's the equivalent of XP. If the FBI was a video game, this is where they get XP at what they consider the end of the level. But I think that's the best metaphor and, and to describe this, and it's crucial to understanding how the FBI works, how what motivates an individuals as actors. I, I just, I cannot, it's another thing I cannot underestimate the importance of, but doesn't make, you know, I just want to be very clear. And there's a lot of this, and it's right up front in the document. We're on page 14 right now, by the way. Uh, I just want to mention that. And again, like, look at all this. Like, just by, so, just by chattering with 
you know, basically the local police about being paranoid about Occupy, right? Yeah, it, it uh, Rise PDX says it's like gold farming, like playing like World of Warcraft, and that's exactly right. And, and so, um, so when you say like, okay, well, what motivates the FBI to like, you know, screw with social movements? Um, well, I mean, this is it. Like, this is very principal to the whole flow of activity of each FBI agent as an individual actor. And um, that is very important. And usually you can get these out of um, data requests. They usually get a few statistical accomplishments. So it was nice to see that there were a whole bunch in here. And then that hopefully helps explain. And, and look, the next one, Birmingham, Alabama. This, um, again, uh, another hidden case ID number. Um, this is serial 54. Um, but this is moving around within Birmingham. So it's essentially from, yeah, exactly. Uh, Rise PDX asks a very good question. How many agents leveled up because of Occupy? Well, clearly, whoever filed this one, you know, did level up. Um, and so they're cap to capture statistical accomplishment is disseminating information to hazmat teams. Octo uh, November 3rd, 2011, special agent told these hazmat teams across the Northern District of Alabama, blah, blah, blah. So, um, you know, that actually is important. That's important to understanding the logic of this. Um, also, I will add that it is kind of ridiculous that smallish states like Alabama, as well as Iowa, actually have two federal districts, which means they have twice as many feds, twice, twice as many federal judges, you know, or I don't know, twice as many judges, but you know, it's just, there's just extra federal districts. Here we go. Another statistical accomplishment. Contribute, disseminate of info, other intel production, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so I just thought, you know, statistical accomplishments, really important to understand. So this is um, one from inside Charlotte. Um, uh, CT means counter-terror preparedness. Um, again, another case ID number disappeared, and this is serial 944. Um, and so, you know, I'm just, like, all of these um, sort of circular ones that just go in, in, inside their own agency, and like why this is such a high um, number, like we could we could do FOIAs on those case ID numbers if they weren't blocked. And so, I mean, this one is totally blocked out to document dissemination of what and claim statistical accomplishment. Like uh, blah, 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 you know, something to share with liaison partners, but not us, you know. And so, I mean, it doesn't even say what this other preparedness is. Um, it could be, I, I don't know. I'm not trying not to speculate. Um, okay, let's see. Um, and then again, the Charlotte statistical accomplishments, collecting statistical accomplishments to uh, spread more paranoia. So there's a lot of that in this document dump. And I, I, yeah, level one, exactly, leveled up. All right, um, yeah, so, all right, let's go to Denver. Um, yeah, you know, this is a funny one. Bank fraud working group. Believe it or not, they don't care how much drug money moves through the uh, Federal Reserve Bank in Denver. They're just quite content to just, you know, meet up and chatter in Littleton, Colorado, you know. Um, uh, let's see. Yeah, the, yeah, the uh, blue smoker, the hidden case numbers, um, that, that makes our investigation a lot more difficult. So you can see this is serial 227 and serial 33, but we can't tell the ID number. So, like... You know, that's that's the first thing I would say to anybody who wants to push further on this is start, you know, demanding these case ID numbers. Um, uh, Thor, do they call it the city and state on each document? Can they figure out who is active, warned of future issues? Yeah, kind of. I, we'll get to Iowa in a minute. So we're on we're on page twenty here of one hundred eight. We're a fifth of the way through. Um, this doesn't really say very much, but talking about cyber threats and. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, yeah, spooks are scared of what they don't understand. Okay. Um, so this is another Denver one. Okay, let's see. The la This is the 15th. This was when... What's the date on this one? I don't even... See. Oh, the 10th. So the next one, yeah, five days later. Um, sorry, I'll scale this out. Hazardous Device Ops section. Um, I'm not familiar with the other acronyms, although it is good to look at them. I do not know what those mean. Special Agent... Oh, okay. 
this is probably Special Agent Bioterror, maybe? S or Supervising Special Agent Bioterror? That's a guess. Um, but if HDO is Hazardous Device Ops, Hazardous Device Ops, you know, hard to say. But um, it does kind of, um, like, eh. Or, or Bank Fraud Working Group. I don't know. Eh. Anyway, hard hard to dig out these acronyms. Um, I may be able to talk to somebody and find a little more out about these acronyms. Hard to say, but pretty ridiculous. Um, anyway, another awesome liaison meeting. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, and more Denver. And what else, of course, is in Denver? Statistical accomplishments. Are we starting to see a pattern, people? Um, assisting another agency. Way to go. Well done. Um, yeah, it's a hierarchical thing, but at the same time, they also operate spontaneously. Okay, here's another uh, important thing to understand about the FBI. The FBI has, like, um, a network of triggers called leads. Um, I think that that is also what is meant by the concept of tripwires. Um, and so when they set lead, uh, lead, set lead, um... As far as I can tell, it's kind of like a way of setting a hook or a trigger so that when some condition happens, that, like, activates this case file again. And so a lot of the back and forth you see between FBI offices has to do with setting leads. Like, oh, if this, you know, person pops up, then you should look at this investigative file. Like, that's kind of the idea. Um, so that that's sort of what those mean. Okay, so here's another one. Uh, Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, once again, look, we got three different case ID numbers, and they're all blank, um, which, again, makes it really difficult to figure out what threads these go back to. Or maybe these different case numbers are related to f previous, like, files or investigations. So it's a real roadblock that, again, these case numbers are missing. I mean, 1063, 19, th th that, that first one is a big file if it has a th more than a 1,000 items in it. So... Um, it's hard to tell, uh, you know, what that pertains to. And so, blah, 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 counterterrorism, blah, 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 coordinator, not too much there. Um, yeah, and so, more liaison contacts, more blah, 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 do not disseminate, blah, 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 blah. So, um, and then, uh, once again, statistical accomplishments. So you see how every time they sort of tap other people with their paranoia, th the right next page is a, a statistical accomplishment. Um, and again, um, that is a very strong pattern that exists in this. Okay, we are now on page 29, another page of statistical accomplishment, and nothing else. That is bureaucracy. Okay, um, these are the list of redactions. Um... Okay, now obviously this thing, the Domestic Security Alliance Council, um, I had not really heard of this before I saw this. Um, if you Google them, there is some material out there. Um, and uh, yeah, so I mean, this is a good example of, you know, fascist thinking, corporatist thinking, um, you know, just working in sync with the big industry or whatever. Um, Oh, yeah. Also, I wanted to mention I have uh, uh, Radio K on the radio. Um, that is a very old college radio station at the University of Minnesota, and uh, RadioK.org. I highly recommend it. Um, anyway, Domestic Security Alliance Council. Um, you know, it's just it's just corporatism 101. You know, talking about um, hey, here's a good example of uh, you know the stuff about um, the union, which is interesting. I mean, the, no, nothing surprising there, really, but the, the Taft-Hartley Act makes it a lot harder for radical um, militant union organizing to happen. And this union thing reminds me of a parallel with the Idle No More situation where the, uh, um, like the tribal chiefs uh, are not really able to be the ones to organize direct action against the government in Canada. Um, and in both cases, I think it's a good example of um, the way that uh, formal structures have certain rules impo imposed upon them, whether it's First Nation or tribal chiefs in the United States. 
and all the weird stuff that goes there, or Taft Hartley and uh, conventional, you know, managerial labor unions. Anyway, um, you know, that is related to this uh, comment in here, so um, just sort of jostled my notice. Um, so, yeah, let me know if you guys have any questions. Um, it's just, this is all just kind of, you know, summary gibberish. By the way, uh, tonight's tonight's beer is of course Summit Pale Ale. Not too bad. Got it for ten ninety nine plus tax. Not bad at all. So, um, you know, there's some funny stuff in here about tips for reducing vulnerability and civil unrest and blah 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 blah. So we're on page thirty two. Um, you know. And I guess what it's mostly about Oakland. Uh, DSAC. Anyway, DSAC is going to need a lot more attention. The fact that these systems are so biased is really unbelievable. Um, someone should probably look into that. WorldQ.iJet.com. Um, kind of interesting. Um, ah, yes. And I love this stuff. These are my favorites. Recipients are reminded DSAC lures contain sensitive information meant for use primarily within the corporate security community. Such messages shall not be released in either written or oral form to the media, the general public, or other personnel who do not have valid need to know without prior approval from an authorized FBI official. Write us at DSAC if you care. So that's pretty sick. That's a good sort of, you know, I don't know, expression of fascism or whatever you want to call it. Um, well, Parisi, I think it would help if everybody gets more familiar with encryption. I think that's a good idea. So anyway, um, okay, so this is a New York one from before everything started, 822. It's already been treated, CT, that's counterterrorism. I guess that's Unit 25 in counterterrorism. Um, let's see. Yeah, well, uh, let's keep searching, PDX. Um, like, try searching for a, a DSAC, uh, DSAC on, um, look for PDF and PowerPoint files. I think that's good. But, uh, yeah, it's pretty new. I, I don't think it's been publicized much. Um, yes. Ah, the Tavistock Institute. They know what motivates everybody, don't they? Why do people fight bureaucracy? Anyway, anyway sorry. Um... So, yeah, this is frustrating because, you know, the, the title is missing, so it's hard to search the title, the case ID is missing, you know, and, and those are, you know, um, uh, yeah, it just makes it much harder to do further research when those basic handles are really missing. And, of course, statistical accomplishment, DI liaison contact, commu private slash community organization. Squad CT25, <laughs> non-informant. Anyway, um, that, you know, I mean, hell, like, in theory, if you just requested all the statistical accomplishments of CT25, you know, maybe you could fish them out. Well, thank you for PDX uh, for checking it out. All right, so, again, this is that sort of lead um, sort of system the FBI has. We're on page 37 sort of as like sort of a you know the, the trigger system of it um and okay so this is september 19th the federal hall and museum of american finance joint terrorism task force uh task force office i think that probably means um is that acronym um blah 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 and again you know these forms are really old in their design um Yes, actually. I mean, you know, look carefully here, and you can kind of appreciate it. So an FD-302, I believe, is kind of the um, basic form to uh, log FBI communications. And, I mean, check it out. Like, it, it, this thing was, re you know, revised in 1995. Like, this is... So this, you know, this form hasn't been touched in, like, you know, 15 years or whatever. It's, it's just kind of amazing how glacial and frozen and weird they are and how the Bureau part of Federal Bureau of Investigation is really represented by these forms and the way they work. So, okay, and here is an FD-1057, which, again, they're hiding all these case numbers. We cannot get these case numbers. They're keeping them away from us. Liaison contact with Zion Bank Security. 
Oh, with his name like Zion Bank. Anyway, um, blah, 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 something about Anonymous. Usually when they're talking about, like, individual tactics, they can kind of hide those. And so I guess this is from Salt Lake City. Um, cool. Well, thank you, PDX, for poking around. Um, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so we're in two more deletions. We're at page 43. Page 44. Um, this seemed to be some kind of correspondence with the Coast Guard around page 45. Yeah, okay, PDX says, Zion's Bank is a Mormon-owned bank in Salt Lake City. Okay. Um, <laughs> M. Parisi, the mice will win in the end, but in the meantime, the cats will be well-fed, Bruce Schneier. Oh, that's funny. Um, yeah, so this is some kind of overdramatic, uh, stuff. I've never really looked at Coast Guard communications before, so I'm not really too up on anything about, you know, this is more of the dramatic hype, and then this is outside the scope per Coast Guard, who knows, could have to do with, you know, an individual boat operations or whatever. Okay, um, uh, okay, I, I, here we go, um, I'm not sure about most of this, but IIR 4129-0426, um, that means, um, I don't remember the acronym, but these are kind of like sort of fluffy intelligence bulletins. Like they say, it's not final, finally evaluated intelligence, so they're not really on the hook to really be accurate at all. Um, and, uh, so it's, you know, it's, it's, so yeah, IIR reports, um, are just kind of, you know, uh, fluff, sort of fluffy stuff, I guess. Um, and you can kind of get a sense of the general fluffiness of it. Um, blah, blah, blah. I feel like when they write in all caps, they think it's more dramatic, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, some stuff, Lauren Shorman. Okay, this is page 48. Okay, page 49. Um, the quote, black block quote, blah, 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 blah. And then, uh-oh, spokesman, see? Spokesman just gets you in trouble. Uh, whatever. And there's some stuff about the Coast Guard. Um. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, I don't know. It all just kind of goes on, it drones on and on. Um, I'm just kind of looking for the metadata. Like, I'm not too familiar with what these funny codes mean and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, we'll just kind of keep on cruising. Um, and, uh, yeah, you know, all gets classified anyway. Blah, blah, okay. Albany. So this is, again, one of these FD-542 forms. Um, and, uh, yeah, and they're again, they're hiding the case ID number. Now, here's another one of the more interesting parts. Um, I thought that this was pretty significant. Um, and it talks about these campus liaison programs. And um, I wanted to recommend, um, uh, basically, take a look at, um, I'm going to pull up another document for you all. And I was hoping, this is not something that people have looked at much. Um, it was a... Uh, data release that uh, I got from when I was down in Iowa at the um, uh, the thing um, you know, Occupy the Caucus around uh, January 3rd about exactly a year ago and um, this was also, you know, I got these documents about the time that uh, the Global Rev office in Brooklyn got shut down as well, which was ridiculous um so anyway, um, I'm just going to load this up for a second here and show you guys um, this URL uh, I think is related to this campus security thing. Like there's some other clues here that I wanted to share with you. Um, let's see, oops, I screwed that up. Sorry. Okay, this is broken. Um, not right. Let's try that again. Is this going to work? Okay, testing. Hello? Hello? Okay. Yeah, um, I think that second link will work for you. Um, yes, so let's check it out. Uh, this is Cointel Pro Gothic. Um, this is my awesome website, hongpong.com. Still on the air. And uh, yes, 
Cointel Pro Gothic 2. Midwestern police state paranoia continues. Winona and Des Moines, hubs of spurious terrorism and great statistical accomplishments. So I uh, did a nice little bit of Photoshop here to kind of talk about this anarchist squad stuff. Um, yeah, so basically, um, in 2004 to 2006, um, the... Uh, uh, FBI was in Iowa and southern Minnesota. They were sort of tracking um, uh, different people they thought of were anarchists, people that they thought were going to go to the Republican National Convention in New York City in 2004, and people that were at a crime think meetup in uh, 2006. And so, uh, um, anyway, and, and David Goodner, um, who's been involved in Occupy Iowa, and I had previously been in touch with him, um, was able to get these documents out. As a matter of fact, I will go back and I will grab the original pile right now. If you all can just chill patiently, I will just grab this really fast. Here we go. Sorry about that. Um, I just wanted to demonstrate to you guys how totally serious I am that we grab these things. Come on. This document. It's the thickening, like, hundreds of pages. And, uh, as you can see, it's the real deal. Anyway, um, yeah. So, um... I was able to load this in a document scanner and get it loaded, and um, and this was the result I got. I didn't have the time to do as much of a comprehensive article as I did on the the or the first uh, data dump in 2010. Um, but uh, I think if you guys really want to look at um, you know the flows of this FBI stuff, these are really good to look at. And there is stuff in here about weird um, sort of college task force things like similar stuff similar similar context like there are other um you know uh networks of sort of liaisons between the fbi and campus security people and um and that's under the auspices of joint terrorism task force stuff really bad news um and uh and and so i think that uh this is again another connection um that uh, you guys will want to look at for between this this campus thing that that caught people's attention with this stuff. So anyway, um, yeah, this is a Cointel Pro Gothic two, um, published March first, twenty twelve, um, and uh, I, I, it is quite relevant. So anyway, uh, back to the main show at hand here. We'll get in, keep rolling. Um, yeah, I just you know, look at these guys. Like these are just jokers. You know, they're, you know, jabbering with... So we're back on page 51 of the OWS uh, data drop here. Um, okay. Uh, thanks, PDX. I'll load that, I guess. Well, uh, PDX, can you hang on to that link for later? I, I can't seem to click on it. Thank you. Just throw it on the chat or whatever. Um, anyway... Uh, yeah, so this is, like, some really bad stuff, just talking about, you know, um, uh, asked whether other campuses were experiencing the same encampments, blah, blah, blah. So, um, they were talking about these trends. Okay, so now we're going back to Albany, um, October 25th, um, some evangelical living waters thing. Oh, you know, living waters hand. I think these. I remember these guys handing me water. That's funny. I totally got water from these guys. They were super strange. Oh man, I missed this earlier. I I definitely ran into these water people. Um, that's kind of funny. All right. So again, look look what we found, everybody. More statistical accomplishments. Like honestly, I. There's just so much of this. I think, you know, for example, if you wanted to try to get at this system, you could basically say, you know, to your to your state legislators, say you have to tell law enforcement 
whenever they talk to these feds, they have to ask if the feds are going to try to put in for statistical accomplishment points by talking to them. Because you can clearly see in this material that they do it all the time. And, and we have to recontextualize that by recognizing the statistical insanity of this bureaucracy. Like that, I mean, that's the kind of thing that I want to draw people's attention to. You know, like I think that is actually important. Okay, so anyway, Anchorage. Um, now, check this out. This is marked S, and I think that might mean secret. So this case ID number is, is you know, closed. Um, the title is closed. Um, if this is an assessment, um, it's interesting. Begin back in 2009. There's some, this is, I don't really get this one. It's weird. Yeah, do they get a cash bonus for each one? Well, think about it, Rise PDX. Remember, statistical accomplishments are like, you know, the XP of the FBI and so if you can raise your career you know and get promoted like this is how you get promoted this is how you get to the next grade of being an FBI agent is these is just getting enough statistical accomplishments and so yeah and, and so that's really super important and so blah 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 stuff about Occupy the Port um and uh yeah so it's kinda hard to read but um more of the same. More about Occupy the Port. <laughs> so, um, since these blank points are clearly clearly referring to a person's name, right? Let's say you thought that that might be your name or someone you know. Um, those names, um, that's why you would get a privacy waiver because if you. It, Anyone who whose name that might be, like if that person signed a privacy waiver, you could probably get a FOIA of this file with those redactions taken off. So that that, that was kind of what I was trying to explain about the, the privacy waiver of FOIAs. Um, uh, yeah, so PDX wonders if statistical accomplishments are more important than suppressing dissent. Well, you know, one of them will make you more money in your career, you know. Or solving a regular crime. Right. Well, because, you know, not all statistics are, are created equal. Hmm. I'm sorry, Blue Smoker. I don't know who Kreskin is, but I'd be curious to know. Um, so, okay. Uh, and this is talking about some weird snitch or something. Uh, something about meeting attendance. A little pretty spooky. Um, and, uh... This is talking about how the Joint Terrorism Task Force, you know, is not being used for terrorism, and it is being used for any civil disturbance concerns, um, you know, and I, and I think that, uh, you know, stands on its own. Like, that, that shows the JTTF um, is not circumscribed in its operations, and, and I think that's another thing you could approach from the state level, uh, not just the federal level. Um, and I know Portland, I, I think it was... Um, Oh, I wish Baff was here. Uh, uh, he he would be a, he knows this stuff. But you know, the Joint Terrorism Task Force. I think it was in Portland, Oregon, was dissolved, and the city pulled out of it. I don't think it was Seattle. I, I thought it was Portland. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. Oh, shoot, I can't remember right now. Anyway, the city backed out of the JTTF, and then there was this shady like false flag ish Christmas tree bombing which the FBI handled itself, and that, you know, that spooked the mayor and spooked the city into jumping in again, even though it was basically another informant stage thing. Okay, Portland, yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, PDX. PDX would know. Yeah, and, I mean, PDX could get more to the details of it. Anyway, um, all right, let's keep moving on. Um, but, yeah, the Portland thing was very shady. And, and so, JTTFs, like, we can really, we gotta work on this. It's important. Um, yeah, sorry, the, uh, the Destructo cat's crawling around. Um, okay, so we're down in page 57. We're, like, halfway here. Let's keep on cruising through this. Um, let's see. So, again, more case ID number obliterated. Um, okay, OO means originating office. And so this is, we're talking domestic terrorism, talking WMDs. Like, you know, these guys never quit. And then the chemical bomb call in Portland, Maine. Oh, I do remember this. Um, okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, somebody like did do a weird chemical bomb at Occupy Portland. Yes, yes, it was an attack on Occupy Portland. So that's what this is. Um, I believe I, that's the thing I think I remember. Um, so that was pretty spooky. So yeah, you know, I mean, all the crazy crap people said definitely motivated like crazy people to come after us, you know? Um, would you chill out, kitty? Cat's chilling. Okay, um, this one's a little hard to read. Uh, uh, stuff about, I don't know, WMDs or, um, stuff with powder, counterterrorism preparedness. Ah, okay, well, it's very small, but here it is. Statistical accomplishments. Statistical accomplishments. Even more of it. See, that's amazing. Uh, you, um, you just get a lot of statistical accomplishment material. This is, this is from Charlotte. And uh, they are leveling up. And, uh, you know, who knows what this is. Hey, what's up, PDX? Um, we're, we're on page 60 about right now. Here's some BS about the Federal Reserve. Uh, which, where is this? Um, yeah, uh, okay, I can go back to that. Hang on. Um, right, oh, okay, yes. Um, PDX is concerned about this line right here. Um, so, statistical accomplishment, WMD, produce, contribute, disseminate, info, other Intel production. And it's part of the WMD, you know, whatever, CP, I don't know, program. Um, yeah, uh, that's, if you look at the other phrases and the other statistical accomplishments, they all have type readouts that are similar to that. Um, well, right, um, you know, and it's all gibberish, but, but that phrasing, the, the word disseminate means, like, disseminating information. Um, yeah, yeah, producer disseminates spoof info. Well, right, it is, but it's statistical accomplishment phrasing. The phrasing is similar to the other phrasings. I guess that's my point. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, here's this crazy sniper attack stuff, which got a lot of attention. Um... Uh, and, um, obviously this was a pretty big deal, uh, just because it was spooky, um, and identified, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, um, gather intelligence. It's pretty sick, you know? I think, like, the, I think, like, as far as I know, like, the FBI is supposed to tell people when they're, like, they get some info on threats like this, and... It doesn't seem very clear they ever did, you know? Maybe they did tell someone in Texas, but that's not what I've heard. Um, yeah, definitely a problem, reaction, solution. Plus, statistical accomplishments. Alright. Yeah, page 62. Um, Jackson, Mississippi again. Um, FIG is the field intelligence group. Um, so Squad 10. Uh, FIG is kind of like the Joint Terrorism Task Force. It's a little different, but I believe that's what it means. Um, and again, you know, the case IDs are missing. And, oh, look, what could this be? Statistical accomplishments. Oh, man, see, this is the pattern that I feel like hasn't even gotten any, you know, news bounce. Like, look how many of these damn things we got. Um, you know, statistical accomplishments, white-collar crime program. Because, like, they're not going to care about how much drug money is moving through the banks around town. Got to have something to stack up on this, you know? You want to move up the level. Um, so, uh, let's see. Um, uh, IA and FA. Shoot. It's something agent, I think. But I don't know what that those two mean. Um, blah, blah, blah. Shady banks in Mississippi. The Biloxi. Have you ever been to Biloxi? Wow. Just check that place out. Ugh. Um, banks sit in day. You know? What the hell does this have to do with white collar crime, you know? But, um, yeah. And so, blah, blah, blah. Statistical accomplishment. Liaison. Intel. Blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, Mississippi. So, um, yeah, there you go. Okay, um, FD-71s. I don't really, I haven't seen so many of these before. Um, uh, uh, 
I think I guess this is you know forms they get for the phone ins something like that um kind of ambiguous doesn't really tell you much yes quad 10 is rocking it well right and you know it's like they really hid all the case numbers in this stuff and so it's just hard to tell and um okay occupy daytona planning meeting okay well so Captain blank also attended Occupy's second meeting. That's great. To gauge the crowd size and location and times for protests. Peaceful in nature. Upload to a case file. Okay, so recommended uploading to a case file. Um, start or continue an assessment. Um, and so an assessment is kind of like where um, the case kind of opens up. Um... And, uh, look, case file numbers and their formats. There you go. Um, so assessments are, are not the same as a full captioned investigation. That much I know. Assessments are kind of minimal. Okay. So we are on page 68. Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, FIG is Field Intelligence Group. I'm not sure about those other ones. Um, domain Management Program. Domestic Terrorism. We've got the DTs another hidden case number even this probably the serial on the case number like that dash number missing again um so blah 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 jacksonville okay now trip wires this was mentioned to me too this is not the same as trap wire i think this is the same as that set lead thing I've seen a couple of those set leads there aren't too many in here but anyway um blah 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 and so um, and then obviously this was kind of funny, this stuff about unemployment rates in Florida, you know, just classic FBI political analysis and Facebook, you know, um, it's an, an excerpt from the daily blanks. That's interesting. Like what type of daily report, um, identify the exploitation. Oh yeah. Here's, okay. Here's more of this crazy sniper stuff. Um, the exploitation of the Occupy movement by blank. Interest in developing. So this is more of this crazy sniper stuff. So this is page like 68, 69, and uh, you know people would need to you know hopefully we'll be able to drum up some you know this is not good. Definitely need to find out who the hell wanted to shoot everybody. Okay, um, this is December fifth, twenty eleven. Squad 7, and whatever GVRA stands for. Uh, Gainesville, okay, so GVRA is Gainesville Resident Agency, which is like those sort of small regional offices of the FBI. Um, kind of like little, there's a lot of little teeny resident agencies around that nobody knows about. So, blah, blah, blah. You know, typo, that should be 2012, suckers. Clean out the mall. Minor distraction. Blah, blah, blah. So, you know, the FBI is just busting its ass to make sure that people can't surprise malls to protest at them. This is your tax dollars at work. So here's that lead network system. Um, okay. Uh, and then uh, page 72, Los Angeles. Um, check this out. Like, the case file number is blocked. The serial is blocked again on both. You can see, because it, it's handwritten in, but, you know, misaligned, so you can see it's, like, off, you know? Um, and again, it's like, they're really trying to hide this new level of information from us, and, and that is important. Um, I'm not familiar with I-1. Haven't really seen this stuff before. Um, some stuff about transit deputies... Uh, mistreatment of people in the jail. Um, a little bit about the Occupy. If they mix with the more violent individuals upset about mistreatment of prisoners in the jails, who could have thought such a thing? Blah, blah, blah. Oh, wait, look at that. The next page, page 74. Statistical accomplishment, once again. Okay, page 75. Let's get on with this. Um... So this was just threats, whatever. 
missing case ID number again. It really, and then, you know, went to the Joint Terrorism Task Force. This is really bad that all these case numbers are gone. Like, I've never, I don't know, every time, I never saw that, like, I saw maybe a couple blocked out case numbers, but this is really not good. Um, okay. Database checks Pittsburgh Joint Terrorism Task Force from Pittsburgh to Memphis. Hard to say what this one really means. Um, nothing in particular. Alright, page 78, Memphis, December 9th. Um, you know, field intelligence group, um, brief to the J Joint Terrorism Task Force. Oh, yeah, and, oh, right, and so the FIG is, um, uh, you know, it, no, no, audio down. Um, anybody? Can anybody see me? Are you sure? Okay. Alright, yeah, it looked fine to me. Alright, um, so, continuing. Um, Memphis, uh, blah, blah, blah. Well, you know, this, God, this stuff is always so silly. Thank you, guys. Alright. Um, Okay. Domestic Terrorism Intelligence, Occupy Wall Street, Anonymous, blah, blah, blah. Stuff about Anonymous. Oh my gosh. Everyone is so obsessed with this stupid Inspire magazine. If it turns out that Inspire is just published by an intelligence agency, somebody has to give me five bucks. Oh, but look, everybody showed up and yabbed at each other, and so they talked with Homeland Security and the state and local people and claimed statistical accomplishments. Task force meeting. Ooh. Ooh, more statistical accomplishments. Oh, that's like 12 XP. They're so close to a level up in Memphis, it's like heartbreaking. They're so close. So, all right, quarterly administrative report. All right, God, I want to get done with this. Okay, I really have 20 pages left, guys. Thanks for sticking it out. Um, yeah, again, you know, case ID missing. The serial is obscured uh, from Miami. Um, blah, blah, blah. Quarterly reporting. See, you know, it would be good to get these documents. Division Command Tactical Operations Center. Oh my god. Oh good, grand jury material. Look at all this crap they did. It would be good to get better with those acronyms. Um, I think SSA is Supervising Special Agent. Um, oh, AO. Might mean Attorney? I can't remember. Um, alright. Now, now, Parisi, like, you know, let's not try to, you know, use the F-bomb here. Like, I don't, there's no reason to bring gender into this. Anyway, or sexual orientation, or whatever. I get what you mean, but, you know, just try to keep it classy. Anyway, um, Miami, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I don't really understand this too much. CTOC. Operational assistance during Occupy in Miami, Florida. Um, warrants. NCIC is that, that big freaking database thing um <sighs> nothing too interesting really All right, I think Omaha oh Des Moines Des Moines Des Moines uh right I mentioned um the COINTEL pro gothic stuff um again um there's a lot of files from Des Moines in this so if you do go into Cointel Pro Gothic 2, um, yeah, if you want more adventures of the Des Moines resident agency, whew, there's a lot. It, uh, yeah, it's pretty big. Um, thanks for sticking with this, guys. Uh, page 85. You know, case number missing. Again, hidden serial. Really annoying. Really a problem. Des Moines resident agency office. Oh, oh, right, okay, so this is, um, this is a pretty big deal. Um, this is one of the more clear, you know, examples of somebody who just really wanted to snitch to the feds and have a good time doing it. And, um, so, 
Occupy Iowa protester requesting me with local law enforcement. This is dated November 16th. So they say on October 8th, they met with investigators at Des Moines FBI office and people from, I think, the task force? TFO, I think, is the task force official or something like that, probably. She had concerns about Occupy Iowa, and she was concerned about comments mentioned property damage and protest behavior, and they're not in agreement with regards to their plan for the caucus's approach. You know, I was there right in January, just as, um, uh, you know, it, um, yeah, so basically, you know, this was coming up in this time of the caucuses, like I said, I was there right when the caucuses were going on, and suspicious closed confidential meetings and offered to supply information, and again, we don't have this case number. And they asked her if she had any concerns about safety, and she had no concerns about anybody's safety or criminal activity. And law enforcement not access or consent to access for social sites. Of course, that's really because obviously Facebook is totally like you know backdoored by the government anyway, so they don't need her password to look at stuff in Facebook. But um, yep. So anyway, um, yes, and. Uh, I should mention, yeah, so, um, for a little while, there was, um, a, uh, there was, there was a blog site, a, um, a WordPress site up, um, and it was called Wendy Lacina is a snitch.blogspot.com, so this is the website that was down, um, it actually disappeared on me overnight, it was only up for one day. And so, um, this is important, and basically, um, the, the post went up, and, like, I foolishly forgot to get a screenshot myself, but, uh, the post went up saying that this person was the person referenced in this document. They, uh, thought that Wendy Lucina was the snitch, um, and then this, uh, post disappeared, um, and, uh, one of my sources down in Iowa that, I trust pretty well uh, agreed that it was probably this person um, judging by that uh, FBI report they seem like kind of a narcissist type like someone who by being a snitch wants to be in the center of attention it's not like they're being blackmailed by the government they just are sort of get off on it or whatever um, and so given by the descriptions I heard about this person it does seem uh, plausible to me I guess um, and uh, so I will show you the um, this is the website that was removed about it. Um, and so I have not, like, Googled around again to see if this has been really discussed in the last few days. Um, but uh, that was... Um, I do trust the person that I talked to probably has a pretty good idea of what the situation was here. And that this is probably the document about what this person was doing. So anyway... Um, I think that is important, and uh, that is what um, should be checked out there. Okay, so onwards, upwards, forwards, backwards, sideways. Okay, page 88. Oh my god, we're getting close. Okay, so Omaha Squad 7, um, another missing case ID, talking to the Des Moines Police Department, was talking about Occupy Iowa. And I'll tell you, there was a lot of security down with Occupy Iowa. It was pretty redonkulous, um, blah, blah, some of the stuff about the First Amendment, oh yeah, ensure the protesters' safety, yeah, 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 public safety, talk to the Fusion Center, um, the writer, we're present to ensure no federal nexus existed, so I guess, yeah, they're, they're, I don't know, it seems like they're trying to keep out of it, maybe, so, well, no, that's true, PDX, they did, they did not release the juicy stuff, um, but, uh, you know, but we don't even have the case numbers, so it's really hard to follow back, like, into the reaches to, like, get at other case numbers. Um, something about an active shooter. I don't know what the hell this has to do with anything. Oh, oh. Oh, a weird letter threatening Occupy Des Moines will attack religious centers of corporate greed during the nationalist holiday season. Eh, you know, just, like, 
you know, there are a lot of crank males and stuff that went around, like, you know, so it's not a surprise that they would show up on FBI files. Okay, so this is page 90. We're getting there. Federal Reserve Bank, Richmond, Virginia, statistical accomplishment. I mean, if you want to see three lines that represent everything I don't like about the world, that's probably it. Um, so, blah, blah, blah. Um, eh, you know, stuff. <laughs> I like this phrase. Disrupt the disloyal, incompetent, and corrupt special interests which have usurped our nation's civil and military power, spawning a host of threats to our liberty, lives, and national security. You know, I mean, something about all this stuff. It's like, it's still got that old, like, kind of courier typewriter monospace font. It's just, it's just channeling, it's just the spirit of J. Edgar Hoover, you know? So, more of this stuff. This is kind of funny. It's actually sort of, I don't know. It's a little different in tone, the rest of the stuff. Blah, 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 Richmond. And, of course, statistical accomplishments. All right. Page 93. Um, okay. Situational information report. Uh, I haven't even heard of that type of stuff. Blah, 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 blah. It's crap about anonymous, blah 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 blah. The Constantine Report. Thank you, Parisi. So check out the Constantine Report. Okay, here we go. Look, a rarely spotted case number serial. I would assume R H is Richmond. Um, and these are so 803B, 804B. Um, okay, right, uh, so, and, and serial 227 and serial 52. Okay, so, again, 803B is the section of the U.S. Code, so if somebody wants to go up, you know, look in, you know, section 803B of the federal laws, like, that is where that is. RH means Richmond, and so C, I think C means case, you know, 52703 and 52707. So those are, like, the, all the total you know, cases, um, like that's one set of numbers, a series of numbers to represent all the cases that Richmond has ever opened. Um, I believe that's what that means. So, um, so you could try to get the other stuff in case file. You could request, I want case file 52703. And they would have to give you something. And that's why they're hiding these numbers so that we can't just you know, request these, because then we can find the numbers to the other numbers, and just keep, you know, chugging away at it, um, and, uh, yeah, so, more jibber-jabber, anonymous, Richmond, Virginia, the city of Richmond has a historically strong finance and insurance sector, with a multitude of friggin' finance, insurance, real estate, blah, 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 blah. no known planned acts of violence, there have been reports of, you know, whatever, anyway, and again, it's like, you know, the Fusion Center is really, I mean, you, you do see in all this stuff so much references to these Fusion Centers. And the fact that Fusion Centers are um, oriented towards protest movements. Um, and also, but also the Richmond Field Intelligence Group, Field, FIG, Field Intelligence Group, another set of stuff besides Joint Terrorism Task Force. Um, let's see. Uh... Eh, nothing too exciting there. That I think. Alright, uh, page 96, getting right down to it. Um, FBI intranet. Virginia Fusion Center, and of course, those weasels at InfraGuard. Not good. Uh, InfraGuard, for those of you that aren't familiar with, uh, Jesse Ventura actually did what I thought was a pretty strong episode about it on his conspiracy theory show. You know, it's another privatized thing. It's like it's like this DSAC. I assumed InfraGuard was kind of the main one, but now we just we found that other one, DSAC, through this document, which is kind of the same thing as InfraGuard. It's very duplicative, shocking as that may be, um, but uh, that is helpful. Were you satisfied with this document? I, I, <laughs> it might be kind of funny if people just start writing in like answers to how <laughs> what they think of these reports. I think maybe that'd be funny. I don't know. Was, are we customers? Uh, do we strongly agree or disagree that it increased our knowledge of the issue or topic? 
Was it relevant to our needs? I think that we, as Americans, should fill in all of these little funny response forms. This is to help me decide on a course of action. Yes, it sure did. Okay. Anyway. All right, page 99. Almost there, guys. Thanks for sticking with me. All right. Again, case ID. Missing. You know, uh, and the, the serial is blocked. Again, like, we can't tell um, what the deal is. So, um, anyway, uh, you know, more of the same stuff. Blah, 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 Oakland, Stockton police. And look what we found. Statistical accomplishment. Ooh, but it's different because it's maritime and it is a 300J maritime. Yeah, there is a lot of Oakland. Alright, Tampa. Uh, Squad 5, Joint Terrorism Task Force, Domestic Terrorism, DT. Both the case numbers, hidden, of course. Um, the Field Intelligence Group, again. Um, ooh, Control File. Now that's interesting. I heard some fun stuff about the phrase control file before. Um, uh, it, but probably not relevant to this, but um, in um, a book by a guy, Al Martin, called The Conspirators, Secrets of an Iran-Contra Insider, he described the folders that the Department of Justice has to blackmail people as control files. Um, so that's the only place I've seen control files as a phrase. I just, I think it's great. The idea of the DOJ just keeps folders of control files so they can just control people. Um, you know, kind of classic. Anyway, um, probably not the same thing, but a, a good story. Um, so Tampa Bay area, blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. Um, nothing in particular. Wait, oh yeah. Yeah, pagans are buying guns in Pinellas County. Kind of funny. Um... Blank is leading the Occupy Tampa, and they'll be traveling for something if it's in November. So, you know, we might be able to figure out who that is, um, and it might be good for that person to um, request data from the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office. Um, that'd be good. Um, <laughs> re, question mark. <laughs> we don't know what this is about, but we're definitely going to claim this little accomplishment with private or community organization. I mean, you know, like, this is actually pretty interesting. Like, don't you think private slash community organization might be fruitful to just request all of those statistical accomplishments for that? Um, I think that would be good. Okay. More domestic terrorism control file. Nant Tampa. Squad 19. Field Intelligence Group. Ugh, I wish I knew what SOS stood for. Um, another missing uh, case ID number. Eric Holder came to Tampa to approve of their pill nation takedown. Yes, our nation doesn't abuse pills anymore. Well done, Attorney General Eric Holder. You did it. Um, and the threat to the Attorney General was low. Well, the Attorney General sort of is in his own black hole of lameness, so his threat to being lame is high. Anyway, um, more statistical accomplishments. Um, the FBI talked with itself, and therefore, that's a statistical accomplishment. Way to go, FBI. They were able to talk to themselves. All right. So, Washington Field Office. Um, domestic statistical accomplishments. Um, hope you guys can read this. Uh, something that was thrown near Occupy DC, so... BS about hazmats, and guess what happened? Participate in command in a major case or a special event in another agency in, to participate in a unified command post and respond to a WMD incident and a WMD liaison. And, uh, so let's see, this was to the Washington Field Office from the Washington Field Office. Yes. So, uh, yeah, there you go. More statistical accomplishments. So, if you haven't noticed already, probably what, maybe like a quarter of this stuff is them just internally claiming credit for talking to other police and statistical accomplishments, getting XP, level up, you know. It's a lot, it's, uh, you know, kind of like playing Call of Duty, only you're crushing social movements instead of playing video games. 
but uh, if you look at the sort of you know numbering scheme, it's not that different. All right, and that's the end. Oh my God, we finally made it. So it both began and end with uh, statistical accomplishments, and um, I uh, I hope that that uh, shed a little light. I I did want to point out some of those key things. I think that. Uh, um, uh, th this case number problem is really serious. I mean, let me just show you guys uh, real quick here. If I can pull one out really fast. Um, let's see if this is a good one. Uh, yeah. Yes, exactly. So, um, like, if you look here, um, you can just kind of see, like, um, this, so this is from this older Iowa release from uh, 2004, but look how we get those like case numbers. See, like that's actually a pretty big deal. Like the case numbers are pretty important to be able to do research, and you can follow those case numbers. The OM, the, the last two, the OMs are for Omaha, and then the first one, HQ, is FBI headquarters. So um, that's a good example of. Um, uh, the way that you you know you can use the case numbers to kind of trace um, the lines of different investigations because they'll say um, you know a uh, cold sun for example was a major um, the one that went after kind of all the, the green militant activists or whatever um, so you find references to cold sun or you find kind of references to old cold cases of some older thing anyway so by taking the case numbers away um, to me, that seems like a new thing in this data release, and I think that um, that issue will have to be taken up at the federal level. Um, so, anyway, excuse me. Um, so that's that's the deal with this uh, FBI stuff. Um, those were the things that kind of jumped out to me when I took a look at it. Whoa. Um, and uh, so here, look. I just wanted to show you guys this stuff quick. I, like, give me another like you know ten minutes here. Um, this is kind of this stuff's kind of cool. This just like just came in, um, and uh, so yeah, let's change gears a little bit um, and check out a whole new thing that nobody's looked at yet. And so it's kind of cool because we are like officially the first people to get concerned about this. Actually, you know, I'm gonna um, I'm just gonna uh, stop and start my video to make a new segment real quick. Um, I just want to make sure my computer is doing okay. Um, yeah, I think we're good. Um, so just give me like 10 seconds and I'll be right back.